your updated Big East standings. UConn's only loss of the season. It was a not a conference loss to Arkansas in the last game they played. They're still perfect in the Big East. And DePaul, the only loss to UConn in conference play. Six and one in the Big East. They lost to them at the end of December. We are happy to bring you women's basketball here on the stage on Fox. Sarah Kustak and Lisa Byington with you and two of the best in the Big East and across the country because they respond to challenges well and that's what you're looking for here today. It's going to be interesting to see UConn had rattled off 10 straight wins. They're coming off their first loss. They're a new team. They're a young team. How will they respond? And when it comes to DePaul, they haven't played in 10 days. They had two postponements. So how sharp and refined can they be playing against one of the best in the country? Speaking of one of the best in the country, Paige Beckers, the freshman for UConn, has certainly been that in some really key games against Tennessee and most recently Arkansas. Lisa, she came in all everything and she has lived up to it and more. Her fingerprints are all over every single contest. Great vision and ability to score. She can facilitate for her teammates. And one of the most special aspects of this freshman is that she understands and lives up to the moment. As for DePaul, junior Sonia Morris is been someone that's developed and grown throughout the course of her career here at DePaul. She's explosive, she's athletic, she's a playmaker, and Blue Demons are going to rely on her to have a big one here tonight. Last time she took on UConn, though, one of her only two games in the season where she scored in single digits. Today's starting lineup sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee Morris, a trio of backcourt mates that are very talented. All those guards averaging double figures for DePaul. Kristen Williams, a talented backcourt player, as well as Beckers. Both of them ranked number one coming out of high school to UConn. And Olivia Nelson Adoda, the coach putting the challenge on her, trying to assert herself, coming off a couple of her worst games of the year against Tennessee and Arkansas. first women's basketball game on Fox. And we are happy to bring it to you from the South Loop at Wintrust Arena. And UConn with the tip. Beckers, they don't waste any time off of that. It's Westbrook with the lay-in. Not the way you want to start if you're DePaul, because one of the main focuses is making sure you're not allowing easy baskets for UConn. They can get out and transition, but the attention to detail and focus is going to be necessary. UConn in the traveling grays, and you see DePaul in the bright reds here as the home team this afternoon. Here's Sonia Morris. Averages about 18 points per game and gets the first bucket for the Blue Demon. She'll be aggressive, and she can get to her spots on the floor. It's about the decision-making factor for her in the balance. The takeaway, it's what DePaul can do. And it's Deja Church, the Michigan transfer, or got away from her. It is not too late to enter the Fox Super 6 College Hoops contest for a chance to win a $1,000 prize. Download the free app and answer six questions about the UConn versus DePaul game for your chance to win. How do you size up with that, Sarah? And you see that defensive pressure here for DePaul. It's what Doug Bruner has provided. And the standard that he has set here with this program in Chicago. He got a jump ball and it'll go the Blue Demons way. They force another turnover. Typical of what you see out of DePaul, but expect more of it against a Huskies team where you're switching, you're showing different looks. You gotta mix up the coverages to keep them on their toes, not allow them to be comfortable. And Jory. Allen walks with it, the Indiana transfer, so a turnover for a turnover. Gino Oriema talking to you in the pregame, talking to us on Zoom as well. Just curious how his team would show up after losing the first game of the season against Arkansas. They've been on the road since that game against Arkansas on Thursday. And what did you say to you in the pregame? It was the worst defensive performance <laughs> in the last 20 years of UConn basketball? I wanted to chuckle a little, but I know that he was probably being serious and it was not the moment, but that's the standard. It's the level that he expects out of his group, and it's not just about getting the job done on the offensive end, but this is the area where they're able to generate so much of their production. Taking it inside the lane and the bucket and the foul for Deja Church. Deja Church, you see splitting the gaps, getting in the seams. 
for Doug Bruno, that's a part of it because their offense is predicated on taking a lot of three-point shots and putting pressure on the defense with the volume of shooting. But you start on the inside, and we've seen that out of DePaul. They look to be aggressive in getting to the rack in order to open up and loosen that defense. Here's a touch, and look at the swarm of red jerseys when Olivia Nelson Adota touches the basketball. They swing it over to the corner, and missing poorly that time is Williams. For the first meeting between these two teams, the end of December, December 29th, DePaul would not only double, but sometimes triple team Nelson Adota. Allen trying to stay with it, getting challenged defensively that time by Griffin. And we've got another jump ball. Doug Bruno admitting to us that every time they take on UConn, there is a battle, the psychology battle of, of taking on the team with the name on their jerseys and they've already played them once this year and, and he joked with us when they went to UConn he had his team look up at the banners digest it for a little bit but reminded them their legs might be longer but they put on basketball shorts just like we do and reminded them as well that this particular group is still working to earn those banners that came from the many iterations of UConn teams before I think the beauty of the psychological aspect and just the mind that Gino Oriemo and Doug Bruno bring to the table. I know we'll dig into it, but the, the decade of USA basketball experience that they have with one another, best of friends. And there's a look for Nelson Adota. And to your point about Nelson Adota, in the last meeting, she had 16 and 14. She was an absolute power on the inside. Good look, an elbow jumper look for Lexi Held. Now, DePaul has five who average in double figures. The guards who they play primarily are four of those five this year. Here's Beckers with the pull-up off the glass. Too strong that time, and DePaul wants to push. Two of the highest scoring teams in the country and in the Big East, and it's an offensive foul call that time on Church. Nice job of Williams getting back, getting set, recognizing how important transition defense is against this DePaul team that wants to run. And she is just sitting, waiting, embraces the contact. Nelson and Dota hanging with Church off of that drive. And for as fast as UConn wants to play and as good as they are in the open court, the Blue Demons are looking to make this one in which the tempo is dictated by how they are pushing the basketball. It was a 75-52 to 52 score in the first meeting back on December 29th. Not many times does DePaul score 52 points, and Gino Oriema told us he doesn't think that's going to happen here today. Lexi Held was the Big East Tournament most outstanding player and got challenged and blocked by Aubrey Griffin on that. Jory Allen will have a handful. One-on-one -on -one defensively against Nelson Agoda. And UConn will keep it with 16 seconds left on the shot clock. I mentioned that December 29th first meeting of the regular season, the Blue Demons had some demon blues, if you will. Ooh. Only the 52 points and and probably not typical kind of Doug Bruno type shooting there from three-point territory. 24% for the game. There's a clean look for Westbrook. Her numbers have just shot up in the last handful of games for UConn. And the hesitation here for Rogers, a very talented freshman. Actually, statistically, in that first meeting, Darion Rogers had the most points and, and flirted with being the best rebounder on the floor on both sides. Sometimes with your freshman, you don't know any better to, to have that intimidation factor weigh in. But no, she is aggressive. She looks to put it on the deck because she can get where she wants off the bounce. Rogers in that meeting had her first career double-double, 20 points and 10 rebounds in that game. It's one and done that time here for DePaul. Cold three-point shooting start. Short sample size or a small sample size for both of these teams because they're going inside and it's working for Griffin and the Huskies. Well, and just nice identification by Nelson Adota when she has multiple players on her to find the open man and the feel of Griffin to cut to the weak side. Here's Rogers. Not afraid to just take it right at Nelson Adota. No, it, and UConn's playing very good defense and guarding their man, staying in front. And what you need to do if you're DePaul is make sure you continue to move the basketball. There's that double team coming, the extra coverage for DePaul defensively. It's held with the pull-up from three. Knock it down.
That is DePaul basketball to a T. It's the quick shooting, it's the early shooting, green light from the three-point line. Very typically will attempt in the high 20s, even approach the 30s in terms of three-point attempts in a game. And that three gives DePaul the two-point edge. Short shot clock now. And Westbrook lofted it. Seven combined turnovers for the start for these two teams. Lexi held on the break. She's eyeing up her defender. You give her room to knock it down. DePaul with the early lead. Let's go above and beyond. Brought to you by Jersey Mike Sub. Be a sub above. And you're not seeing double here. All of the top <laughs> five in terms of efficiency, Big East field goal percentage leaders this season, one through five on the UK Yeah, that's pretty impressive, Lisa. And a, a product of talent, yes, skill, efficiency, but also how UConn operates on the offensive end, the type of shots they're getting, the quality. You look at the fact that they're averaging close to 22 assists per game, and taking quality shots allows you to have that type of chance. There's another three-point look, or that's a two. They're going to review it, though. So they call it a two on the floor for Sonia Morris, and then the next dead ball, the next opportunity, they'll take a look at that. Backdoor look there for Beckers, who can't get the reverse to fall. And Beckers is getting to all the right spots, doing a great job cutting her field. Just a handful of shots here early on have not went through. Rogers will take the three, and it's the second three-point make for DePaul and in the game. UConn's loss to Arkansas, in some ways, you can look at how DePaul plays, the style, the makeup of their team, uh, similar. And a lot of that came down to shot making. And there's the first three-point make for UConn. We're waiting for it by Kristen Williams. I agree with you. When you think about guard play that Arkansas had, Chelsea Dungy with the season-high 37 points, Amber Ramirez with 22 points. Those guards combining for 59 points and nine threes it's a blueprint that you would think the right, and that's right. because they're smaller they don't necessarily have the size but it's the shot making in particular on the perimeter and being able to get to the basket pending on what UConn is showing you defensively there's Kiara Dahlman who's checked in she's a backup five player number 42 in red for DePaul and she's one of the tallest players that the Blue Demons have on their roster. And important for her to come in when you look at the likes of Nelson Adota and the size with UConn, rebound. Make sure you're blocking out, doing the little things, play within yourself. Church trying to make something out of nothing. And Held rips it away. Held with a little two-on-one, she'll take it herself. And a blocking foul that time it is one thing that Lexi Held has gotten into trouble with this year is picking up fouls early. She had three fouls in the first half in that Louisville game. She got into foul trouble in that first meeting against UConn as well. Nelson Adota takes the dribble for the lay -in. And that's an instance you saw the two players double Nelson Adota in the corner. She does a nice job of putting on the floor. Weak side help has got to come over quicker and at least show a body. Rogers got some daylight, that's all you need if you play for DePaul. Two-point edge. Aubrey Griffin. Been in the starting lineup really for the last five games in particular because she can provide that. You're playing well, you gotta love how she plays. She's got an athleticism, a bounce to her game. Sonia Morris, talk about bounce, gives DePaul the lead right back. Held on Williams. And out to the Tennessee transfer, Athena Westbrook. And that's a clean look for Westbrook. More than half of her field goal attempts are three point attempts, but she's shooting 45% from deep. She normally can knock down those clean looks. UConn wants to run a little bit, and nicely done on the fast break. It's Williams with the finish. Classic run out for UConn, of which they'll exploit you if you are not quick about getting back and identifying where those runners are, picking up the basketball. 
entertaining here so far. We've seen five different lead changes, four different times already in the first quarter. This game has been tied. Here's Beckers with the take, and it runs out. She'll get a couple at the free throw line. And the one thing when you are playing the Utah Huskies, you got to try and eliminate is easy baskets, in particular the fast break. And a nice job by Beckers getting it ahead. You see Kristen Williams coming from the weak side. And I know Beckers uh, probably frustrated with herself for not finishing off that play and a couple other misses, but you see the smooth nature of her game. And we're going to be talking about this freshman quite a bit throughout the course of it. And it's because of the fact that she doesn't get sped up. She's able to read a defense, even though she's off right now. And she's experienced this, as you will, throughout the course of a season, especially your freshman one. She still has the same amount of confidence and composure regardless. And we've seen her hit some daggers throughout the course of the early part of this year, some timely basket. She is a special individual. We saw her numbers Thursday against Arkansas, career high 27 points, 15 of those coming in the fourth quarter. And we're seeing kind of the star emergence of Paige Beckers. Tori Allen, that's her first career three for DePaul. Here's a look for another freshman, Mika Mule. And that is where Nelson Adota can be dangerous, but they're gonna call it jump ball. Off the switch, though, you had a mismatch, and that was good recovery of Jory Allen getting back inside to recover. Block out the play, you see right there, the jump ball. And that's gonna be a factor for DePaul. They switch so much defensively, how they identify, identify those mismatches. Here's held with a pump fake. And the soft touch to fall. It's a four-point edge for DePaul. At the end of the first 10 minutes, an impressive showing here from the Blue Demons in round number two between two of the best in the Big East. Nice and tight, just like we like it. Lead changes seven time, times that it's tied was four in the first quarter between UConn and DePaul. Well, Doug Bruno, if you look at his record, he's been at DePaul for now 35 years, but you look at the two losing seasons right there in the late 90s. Those were the last losing seasons that he had ever. So there was what he had called a paradigm shift after the 12 and 15 record in the 98, 99 season. He said, it was created by an epiphany. And at that point I was building teams from year to year, but I was not building a program. So our teams in the past were good, but not whole. So back in the late 90s, he decided to start from scratch. Recruiting players who not only were well-rounded academically, athletically, but community service-wise. And he said, I thought to myself, this could work. And if it doesn't, I'll either get fired or we'll start something special. And we now know that he started something special. Beckers for three. Some hot shooting here from both of these teams to begin with, except from three-point territory. A little bit slow for UConn to start. And it's Mule who picks up the first personal. And so since the late 90s, DePaul has become one of the five teams to qualify for each of the last 17 NCAA tournaments in really good company, as well as Connecticut, Notre Dame, Stanford, and Tennessee, the only schools in the nation who can claim that. Consistency of excellence for all of those schools. And I'll also add on to when he discusses recruiting, the type of character he recruits. The fact that how the style of play has translated, if you watch the NBA, you understand how it's evolved in the three-point shooting, the up-tempo pace, the ball movement, switching defenses. That's what Doug started doing in those early years. In when I was playing during that time, in 2002 and those years when we got back to the NCAA tournament, it was freedom of shooting, the freedom to put up a, a ton of three-point looks. You wanted to play fast, essentially having four guards, four players that can handle a, a rim running big. And, and that has been so in integral in how they found that type of success. Well, understanding who he is, who this program is, 
There won't be a whole lot of, of five-star players, and Doug Bruno will be the first to tell you that. He can't. He won't get a whole lot of five-star players, but what he can get are the players to play to his system that it, you're That's a perfect to. way to describe it in getting the most out of the team and out of the group, and it's all about how can you make the collective greater than the individual. And, and also the challenge of playing against some of the top tier teams. I mean, we see this with UConn Honor obviously re-entering back into the Big East, but still looking to play them. You think about the fact that the three losses thus far this season are all teams that are currently in the top 10. The understanding that in order to continue to improve and what you want to do in the postseason, it's playing that level of competition. Doug Bruno is was one of the loudest voices in support, actually, of UConn coming back to the Big East. Did he just want to go out to dinner in Chicago <laughs> with Gino, hang out with his best friend? We got a whistle there inside the lane. Oh, Gino Oriema and, and Doug Bruno, longtime friends. It's, it's so great to hear the respect that they both have for one another. I mean, they first met just basically in the basketball world real early when both of these young coaches were starting at both of their respective schools. They like to solve all the world's problems first and then all the basketball problems second. That's the way I like to think about it. Here's held for three, and she knocks it down. And DePaul, 50% shooting from back there to start. They've had some tough shots, too. Beckers with a hand in the face on held. And a lot of it for DePaul has been catching a rhythm early. They got some looks on the inside, and now they're in a flow. Five point advantage over first. That was a pretty move by Kristen Williams. Talk about the explosiveness and acceleration on the first step. That's so much of what Williams' game is predicated on. Williams, an Arkansas native, went back to play in her home state for the first time in the last game on Thursday with a few family members in attendance. There's the scramble and the hustle, and the Huskies on the push. Mule to Peckers to Edwards. Clinic. You see the movement, finding their spaces, the availability that the post players present. And for a player like Aaliyah Edwards, she will just run. Already, it looks like there's a just a better offensive flow. I, I know Gina Oriama had told you in the pregame. At this point, at the end of January, we've been playing about 20 games. UConn has been hard to find a consistent rhythm and schedule of games and practices. They've only played 11 games coming into today. Here's another look at Kristen Williams. So mismatch with Allen on her. She goes right around, reverse in the finish, slicing through the defense. And then look at Edwards on the inside. It started with her posting so hard. She is a physical player. She draws and engages in the defense. And because of it, her teammate was able to find her for the give back. It'll be interesting if Oriema goes with Edwards and Nelson Adota playing them together a little bit here today. They've got the big lineup and a small lineup. They went more with the small lineup towards the end of the game on Thursday against Arkansas. Sonia Morris dropping it off to Allen, who kicks it out into the corner, but Kelja had a look at it. Largest lead for either one of these teams. It's been seven points by DePaul in the first quarter. Here's Edwards with the elbow jumper, and she drills it. Smooth. So she's working on the inside. She's a presence around the block. She can also make you think and pull you out. It's part of a 6 nothing score and run. UConn now back on top. But before you say that, Sonia Morris has something to say. Only had eight points. I mentioned that was just one of her two games that she scored in single digits when she took on UConn the first time. 2 of 14 shooting in that game, the worst shooting game of Sonia Morris's season here so far. And it's a much different story. She started out a perfect 4 for 4 here today. Becker's trying to feed Edwards. She got a double team. And DePaul making it just tough enough. They're saying staying tight on those rolls and slips. Out to Morris. Her first miss of the afternoon.
10 points for Held, eight points for Morris on the DePaul side. Edwards going back to work and just pulling down Dolman on that possession. A lot of contact initially too, and there was a breakdown and miscommunication where Edwards was open to begin with. A very nice job just staying with the play. Church thought about it. Morris doesn't need a whole lot of time to think about it. And Williams trying to play off that high screen. Eating up some time on this possession. Now nine to shoot for Beckers. And she drills it from deep. <laughs> what a shot. And you see how tight DePaul has been off of their switches. The step out of Dahlman to make sure that a hand was up and Becker still able to knock it down. Trying to back it down is Bekelja who's off the mark that time. That shot that Becker's hit was really right around the same spot on the court in that Tennessee game. She had gone out of the game because of an ankle injury, came back, and UConn needed a big bucket, and Beckers provided it. And this one today was awfully impressive. And Paige Beckers is just an understanding of patience and poise. Plenty of room, beautiful stroke, cold. Rob, good to hear your voice. Big East Basketball, of course, is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Jeep, there's only one. And this is the second meeting between UConn and DePaul. 33 to 29 as we approach that halftime. Up four minutes and 24 seconds before that. Paige Beckers, how's her day been, Syracuse stuff? Uh, Paige Beckers has extraordinary vision, and what she does is, is attract so much of the defense with her gravity that allows her to find teammates. And, you say this earlier, but it's the quick decision making that she has, and it's the understanding of how and when the timing is right to get her teammates open. And seven points, seven assists, four rebounds. A, a typical start to the day for someone like Paige Beckers, who adds in every single category with her imprint on the game. Gino Oriema telling us, though, Paige Beckers has to learn that at some point there might be games where you're going to have to score 30 points and you're going to have to score 40 points maybe for us to win the game. And you have to accept that. You have to be a little bit more selfish in the right moments in the right time. I love that her mentality is so unselfish. And I think this is a starting point of, can she put up 30? Can she put up 40? Absolutely. But she always wants to get her teammates involved. And that's something that she will grow into as she continues to progress. Here's Rogers with the pump fake, drops it off nicely to Allen. She knew that there was defenders hawking that could have affected that shot. Beckers for three again, dialing it up from distance, and she's a perfect three for three from three on the afternoon. Although Aubrey Griffin got a hand to the face on that three-point attempt just right underneath the basket. As she's coming down the lane, keep an eye on number 44 in gray. And you see her slicing right through and gets the elbow from Edwards and then a follow-up knee. Ooh. Aubrey Griffin is a, a tough player. And it's just being helped off there. And UConn again playing a little bit shorthanded. As you see, Makarad is unavailable again for another time. Anna Makarad has, is actually close in the Big East in terms of assist to turnover ratio, can take care of the basketball. She's continuously been out with a lower right leg injury. UConn hopes to even have her back in the next couple of weeks or so. She's a shooter. She can stretch you out, knocking down three-point shots. Here's Morris. And the quick hands that time by the UConn defenders. Nine-point advantage for UConn. It's the largest lead of the game on any side. 
Edwards taking it in deep, going to work. Doesn't get it to go, but another example of just how physical and hard Aaliyah Edwards will demand the ball. Working it to Rogers. Again, Allen will get another chance at it. There's a foul there on the floor. I believe it might go against Nelson Adota. And it does. Yeah. And what Jory Allen is doing a good job of is getting behind the defense. Obviously, she doesn't have the size of Nelson Adota, but she's able to work along the baseline in those dunker spots to get underneath. And the delivery by Sonia Morris was all a part of it. Morris too strong that time. Allen trying to chase it down and a heads up play that time from Westbrook who threw it off of Allen's shoulder. Jory Allen, the Indiana transfer, has been in pursuit, but just a heads up play there by Avina Westbrook. Well, she came off the bench for the Hoosiers last year. And Doug Bruno had recruited her, wanted her to come to DePaul in the first place, actually has a, a dad who played at DePaul, an uncle who went to DePaul, so she's got some DePaul history in her family history. And there's the triple team coming from the Blue Demons, but a foul committed that time on Lexi Held, and she picks up her second. So we've seen that with Edwards, with Nelson Adota, Griffin some. Anytime UConn's able to get the ball inside, the entire defense collapses. And a quick look there, missing it poorly is Nelson Adota that time. Trying to push, and DePaul will keep it. By the way, a couple of guards on the DePaul side, Held and Morris now with a couple of personals. Something to keep an eye on with 2.25 left to play. This is what UConn I was talking about. How much will they play with Edwards and Nelson Adota on the court at the same time? The runner falls there for Morris. Nelson Adota was looking inside to Edwards. And we got a push off that time on Aaliyah Edwards. Edwards will pick up one of those a game, it always seems, because of how strong she is in trying to fend off defenders and open herself up for those post entries. Puts in about 17 minutes here so far. One of the, the new faces, one of the freshmen here for UConn this year. Eight newcomers on this roster for the Huskies. Rogers, a deep attempt. That one was all the way out and popped up. Seven-point advantage. Westbrook on the push, and it's Williams with the finish. What a feel. Good back cut. Held was working so hard to deny Edwards. She made a right read. Good pace here for both of these teams for this first half and the first 20 minutes of play, and Rogers gets hacked. McLean almost able to recover off that. She leaves her feet to try and contest the shot, it, and that's a part of it, too, for DePaul against this UConn defense, how much ground they cover, the quickness and their aggressiveness on the ball and off. Shot fake. It's, it's a big shot fake game, pass fake game, try and shift the defense. Millions of kids nationwide are without their normal access to sports and play due to COVID-19. That's why Fox Sports and Good Sports are restoring play for kids and the programs that serve them through donations of brand new sports equipment. Text play to the number on your screen to keep kids in the game. Eight point advantage here for UConn over DePaul. About a minute 30 left to play in the first half. Becker almost taking the contact, didn't matter. This is the, what you're talking about. She wasn't sped up on that play. Uh, and she's able to still maintain her upper body control. She made that look like an easy basket. Let me tell you how challenging that is. Off the dribble, one-legged, embrace contact, still square your shoulders to finish that type of play. That's Westbrook who is whistled for the offensive foul. A little bit of the push off. That's her first in this game. Edwards with two. Nelson Adota with two on the UConn side. So a couple of players with each team with two personals. Two key players from each side. Inside a minute to play before halftime. Here's Allen. McLean saves it for UConn. And Beckers, Williams that time. And if that's on Morris, that's number three. 
It is. So the third personal on Sonia Moore is the leading scorer for DePaul. And just good hustle. That's such an aspect of this, the 50-50 balls, making multiple effort plays, eventually ends the sequence with a teammate at the free throw line. But UConn has been absolutely dominant on the glass, getting second chance opportunities, continued to secure defensive possessions. And they've been moving the ball really well. And despite the hot shooting and the start, here for DePaul, as you see, you said, Sonia Morris, three fouls but it's been a methodical way in which they continue to attack you. So for the last 43 seconds, it'll be Bikelja checking back in for Morris. <laughs> 11 point advantage for the Huskies. Score pass to Hell. Another opportunity here for DePaul. Shot clock still in play. Here's Rogers taking it baseline and drawing the foul. Two shots coming up. Westbrook with the personal. DePaul not only gets a, a second chance opportunity there due to the hustle, but even the initial aspect of that possession shifting to the second side of the floor. And against this Husky defense, that's so much of what you need to do because DePaul has an, only two assists thus far in this first half. A team that normally is making the extra pass, sharing the basketball. Their shooting percentages have gone down, but some of that too is due to the fact of just finding the open teammate. One last opportunity here for UConn before the half is here. They leave Beckers wide open, and she can do that. UConn nearly got another. Westbrook fighting for it. My goodness, what a sequence. Hustle plays. You're starting to see the intensity cranked up from the side of UConn. And so much has been generated from these opportunities. And... The make goes in, Avina Westbrook heads up play, something that Darion Rogers, only a freshman, of course, but the attention to detail, this circles back to any time you are playing a team like the UConn Huskies. You gotta make sure that you're not giving them any extra possessions, easy opportunities. Gina Oriema and UConn will systematically wear you down. And slowly but surely, they have built this 13 point advantage here in the first half. Five tenths of a second, and they'll just run it off. Largest lead of the game is here 47 to 33. UConn over DePaul. It's halftime in Chicago. After the break, we'll send it to our Fox Studios in LA for the Jeep Grand Cherokee halftime report with Rob Stone, Jim Jackson, and Casey Jacobson. The first half stat sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee, over 50% shooting. That's actually on par with UConn's efficiency for the season. Their season averages are about 53% from the field. They started out slow in three-point territory, but then picked it up a little bit. And Paige Becker's your leading scorer after the first half. She has scored or assisted on 12 of the team's 18 buckets in the first 20 minutes. Amazing. 15 points, seven assists, four or four from the three-point line. It's hard to even say that I uh, she missed a couple early shots that she probably would typically make but she has been on point in all areas leading this UConn charge from the South Loop in downtown Chicago it's Wintrust Arena the home to DePaul basketball Sarah Kustak Lisa Byington with you happy to showcase women's basketball in two of the premier programs in the country and in the Big East here on Fox today Opening possession of the second half for UConn, and Beckers will take the handoff. That one popping out. In and out. 
if she gets a show of airspace and room, she can get off a shot. You see the range that she has. So for DePaul, it's going to be about going under, going over. How are you attacking those ball yes! And how are you attacking the best shot blocker in the Big East? Olivia Nelson Adota try to get over those arms. And she's a player that this is the expectation with her size, with her athleticism. She should be protecting the rim, protecting the paint. And that's a part of what Gino Oriema expects out of her. She's best in the Big East. You see there, she gets about two of those every game. Both teams going with the same starters in the second half as in the first half in the bucket, the lefty lay in for Dee Bekelja. Bekelja has a knack for scoring. You saw even there just the quickness of her scoop. It allowed her to get through the arms of Nelson Adota there around the basket. And it's going to be needed for DePaul to continue to look to penetrate, be on the bounce, attack the basket, loosen things up. The Euro step and Aubrey Griffin makes her way to the rack. She got knocked in the face in the first half. We saw her leave the game. Good to see her back and knocked in the face twice and recovered from that as Griffin chases it down for the rebound. Daughter of Adrian Griffin. Remember him playing at Seton Hall? Longtime assistant coach in the NBA with the Toronto Raptors now does an incredible job. You can see her game coming from her father's genes and just how athletic, explosive she is. And she's got an ability to jump, but she's also got great instincts. Just her feel around the game. And that number 44 is familiar in the family as well. Nelson Adota with the lay-in. Things to watch. Here to start in this second half. Sonia Morris, remember, she's playing with the three personals. She's got the ball right now for DePaul. Ten points on the Blue Demon side, as well as Lexi Held's ten points. Those are your leading scorers for DePaul. And Deja Church with the pump fake, dropping it off to Allen. And Williams got a piece. Morris this time from three. She started out this game a perfect four for four. She was red hot, had a quick eight points. And the turnover for UConn, we're back the other way. The Kelja trying to chase it down. Look at how quickly though UConn closes on you, but Hell makes some pay from three. You push, you put pressure on, and then you finally get the kick out. To your point, that's where two in the second quarter, the transition defense for UConn was on point. They were getting back. They were able to pick up the ball, find their assignments. Beckers being deed up defensively by Deja Church. Out into the corner that time. It's a three for a three. Avina Westbrook hits one. And off of UConn last, 25 seconds still on the shot clock. Uh, and Deepa Kulja, as you see, everyone was back. They were concerned about that push in the early offense, and she circles it back out. Some room for help. Important knockdown. And speaking of, you got four jerseys collapsing in. The gravity of Paige Becker's on the floor has allowed many open teammates some quality looks. Avina Westbrook, the latest. Allen looking to challenge Nelson Adoto. It was a kind of a late whistle coming from the far side of the corner. And they're going to call Nelson Adota for the personal. Jory Allen has been battling and doing as much as she can with the size of Nelson Adota around the inside. But we saw it a couple possessions here early in this quarter, also in the first half of teammates drawn in the defense, engaging the big, forcing the weak side help, making nice passes. But it's not easy when you have the amount of size that UConn can put around the basket. DePaul wasn't really expecting Jory Allen to be able to play this year, but the NCAA in December came with that blanket waiver for all the transfers. We mentioned that she played last year as a freshman off the bench for Indiana. And early on this season, DePaul really playing without many bigs. I mean, they were depleted in the front court. But the first six games, they were depleted. Here comes the double team against UConn's big, Nelson Adota, taking it inside, checking her feet. It's Westbrook from the corner. So silky smooth on the three. Nice play, too, by Nika Mule, making that all happen. She's a pass-first point guard, comes in as a backup in that area, but she can drive, penetrate, and look for those shooters. 
Morris off the mark that time as Church chases it down. Up against Beckers, who stayed vertical and straight up. 17-point advantage, the largest lead of the game. And taking it baseline, getting the roll and dropping it in is Williams. And that will prompt Doug Bruno to call a timeout here in the third quarter. The largest lead of the game at plus 19. Avina Westbrook has been ringing it up from three this season, nearly 46% this time. It's the pass from Mule Buckets. Nineteen point advantage. It is a tall task and Doug Bruno knew that to win in the Big East with UConn back in it And in fact, he was already thinking about it last year when he won the Big East tourney championship Think about a three-peat now What's the secret to all this consistency with DePaul women's basketball? Enjoy it while we can because here comes UConn <laughs> Literally minutes. That's what his answer was to John Fanta last year when DePaul had a three-peat of winning the Big East tournament title. And this is why, because in the Big East, the first time around here for UConn, regular season titles, 19, tourney titles, 18, NCAA titles, 8. I mean, the, the resume that they put up in the Big East is impressive. But Doug Bruno had said, if there's anyone who should not want them in the Big East, it's me. It's DePaul. We benefited the most by not having UConn in. But he feels like, as a whole, and as a national brand for the Big East Conference, UConn just elevates his program and everybody else in the league. And if you're a competitor, that's what you want. You want to be able to go up against the best. Held for three out of the timeout. It was a very animated timeout, too, by the way, for Doug Bruno. As he feels UConn is pulling away, scoring the ninth or 29 points in the second quarter. A 12 to 7 advantage scoring here to start the third, and Allen picks up the personal. Both of these head coaches talk about kind of the, the old Big East and the strength when everyone was pushing everyone else. And, and they both agreed that when you felt like you got out of the Big East and went into postseason play, you had earned it and you were ready for it. And that's all a part of it, especially with these programs, about thinking about the postseason, what comes after. Williams with the tough take. And, and I think, too, that's why there is such a uniqueness in this season when you look at this UConn team. You lose so many non-conference games for so many teams across the country of areas that you normally improve. You figure out your team. You learn about your group. And on the transition, it's Nelson Adoto with the finish. And the dime by Paige De Beckers. You see the enthusiasm she brings. Talk about outstanding vision. In stride to her big woman for the finish. It is 63 to 40, your score, UConn over DePaul. Paige Becker is a lot of pressure on her. The number one recruit coming out of high school last year. A lot of attention and thinking, how good can she be being compared to some of the other UConn greats in, in guard territory? Yeah, and interesting. We're taking a look at Sue Bird, Diana Taurasi, absolute legends. And we spoke with Doug Bruno about this, just a comparison. And he said, I know she's not there yet. And you're hesitant to bring up those type of names, but she's in that category. And Coach Bruno said, I almost see her as a cross between Bird and Tarasi. And I spoke with one of the absolute greats and legends of UConn and women's basketball, Rebecca Lobo, who everything I'm saying today is thanks to, to her brilliance and guidance and help. But it, I was asking Rebecca because she knows more than anyone. I said, how fair is that? She said, that, that's absolutely things you see, a reflection of her game, the charisma that Diana had, whether it was the daggers of Sue, her ability to organize, of course, the vision and the big shot making. But the one thing I loved is she said, you see in terms with Diana, how she was everyone's biggest fan. She was their own hype man of the excitement and making sure that everyone felt good around her. She said, you see that in Beckers already is a freshman. And I think qualities like that are so important. And on cue, Beckers with the backdoor look in for two. It's her first points actually of the second half. She put up 15 in the first half. You feel like you're seeing a little bit of the leadership and the winning gene in terms of her UConn career in the games against Tennessee. I mentioned the three-point shot that she hit late in that game as well as the 27 that she put up against Arkansas in the last game that they played. 
great feel on the back cut. Sonia Morris lost her, but to that point, she also hit struggle from the field so mightily. Prior to that moment, she twists her ankle, she goes out, she comes back in. So for a player to be able to be having such an off night, then come away with one of the biggest game-changing shots of the night, that's the type of stuff that you look and you're like, wow, this player, you know, for so many reasons has got something to her. Well, she walks in and, and we showed you some of the greats, right? Sue Bird and, and Diana Taurasi, who wouldn't want to be, I mean, it's it's a compliment to be compared to those players, but it's a And again, she's got, she's got a long she's way got to go. She's got a long it's way not, to go. We're not, not saying. yet saying, but it, it's just the idea and of stylistically right. how she plays, what she brings to the table, and the balance between both of them. And there is Gina oh. with Diana and Sue. I'm going to tell you this. If you can Google right now, Gino had a conversation with those two players and a couple other teammates from the 2002 team, arguably the greatest women's basketball team in history. They went 39-0 and, and and just talked about the winning culture and winning mentality. And it is, it is you know, a few minutes long, maybe eight or ten minutes long, but it is worth a listen to watch him sit down and talk with some of the greats. Here's Kristen Williams with the play. Don't do it now. Do it during the commercial break. Do it after the game, Lisa. You're sending away our viewers. Stay locked in with us. Scramble for the basketball, and UConn pushing for a little bit more. Stretching this lead out, Williams, body bucket, and one, Kristen Williams. Strong take. And take a look at this. So Westbrook doing a nice job of look, keeping her eyes on Church. No look bounce pass, gets it ahead. And this is what we're talking about. Beckers, the excitement, <laughs> the enthusiasm. Love getting it. everyone hyped and live. And that's what you need. And you know, it's talked about so often. We do the fact that you're playing in arenas with no fans. Uh, you gotta create your own juice, create your own energy. Here's held from the corner three. And DePaul has now hit six of those. Below their average still a little bit. They will average just about nine three-point makes in a game. Out to Beckers. Plenty of time to pull and fire and hit. If you are DePaul, what you're looking at, the fact you mentioned this in the open, you haven't played in 10 days. You've had two games postponed. You are still looking to get better, to improve, to refine aspects of your game. So don't take this as we got a 30-point deficit against a monster of a team and this is over. You got a lot of time left. Nelson Adota. Double digits now for Nelson Adota. And UConn, 26 points in the third quarter. Seventy-five to forty-three lead, UConn over DePaul and the Huskies. You know, we've documented what they've done in terms of being in the Big East, but certainly have established themselves as the standard in women's basketball. And it's led by their head coach Gino Oriema, who already is a Hall of Famer. So we kind of decided to kind of crunch the numbers and say, well, hmm, since his Hall of Fame induction, what has he done? He's almost had like a second Hall of Fame <laughs> career after he went into the Hall of Fame. This is extraordinary. And kudos to our, our amazing truck and all the research and stuff. Because this, I think, puts things in perspective of just how much he has accomplished. Still more to go. Uh, the numbers are almost so eye-popping that it's hard to wrap your head around. But it's the level of consistency, the demands, the expectation, the ability to adapt with different groups, different personnel, and what he demands out of these players. Because sure, you could ask Paige Beckers just how tough he has been on her even to this point, but that's how he gets his groups to another level. He arrived in stores prior to the 85-86 season. The program only had one winning season at the time. The gym had a leaky roof. You know, he was looking around. He was being recruited and, 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 and interviewed for the job, and they kept telling him that UConn was special. And, and he's looking around, and he's saying, where's the special? But you know what? They, they, they built the special year after year because he believed, and he's got a system that he believes in as well over in stores. Credit to him and also to his staff. I mean, think about Chris Daly, all she has done um, throughout the course of her time with Gino, Shay Ralph there, Jamel Elliott. Laying is good there for Church. 
Becker, as we've mentioned, the number one ranked recruit. Kristen Williams, also the number one ranked recruit. They have AZ Fudd coming in next year as another number one ranked recruit. Goodness. And we say all that to say that they still believe that there's a lot of gaps to fill with this group this season. Williams gets the miss and the putback. Taking it hard to the cup that time is Morris, who's done a good job not picking up a fourth foul here in the second half. Now, don't forget, again, this was a game in a first quarter where DePaul led 22 to 18. And UConn turned it up to put in 29 points in the second quarter. 32 right now in the third quarter. They've been sharp with their passes, their cutting. Elbow jumper for Nelson Adota. And Williams have done a good job charging the offensive rebounds, but not that time. Paige Becker's pretty good. Freshman phenom, and she's living up to it. 20 points, 10 assists, doing it with efficiency. Oh, she can get you on the inside and knock the shots down from the outside, imprint, imprinting every aspect of this game thus far. Another quarter to go. some of the great faces of UConn past on both the women's and the men's side. 11 women's championships and four on the men's side. Time for our game summary sponsored by Progressive. Get slam dunk savings today. UConn, as we have documented, after DePaul took the lead, they've outscored the Blue Demons since the end of the first quarter. That's a simple way to put it, and it's come from both ends of the floor. You think about the fact that they've been dominant on the glass, the second chance opportunities, plus 30 in the paint. UConn's getting it going in the fast break and creating some points off turnovers, a variety of areas, and so much too has just been their efficiency, how their offense is clicking, the way they're moving the basketball. A UConn team that's been on the road since their Thursday matchup against Arkansas. After they lost to Arkansas, they actually hopped on a plane and flew to Chicago to beat some of the winter storms here coming through. So they've been on the road trying to bond together as much as they can. They got a timeout call for the DePaul side. And what you like to see, I mean, 21 assists so far in the day for UConn. They're sharing the ball really well. A quarter left, and what you want to see out of DePaul is maintain a level of pride, because it's how you finish off this one. Big East Basketball, sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Jeep, there's only one. Sarah Kustak, Lisa Byington with you and the rest of our Fox crew. Happy to bring you women's basketball in this stage on Fox. Thank you for joining us. UConn and DePaul. They feed Allen again on the post. Daniger, who's getting more playing time for DePaul. And six seconds here for the Blue Demons. Morris will pull. And you just saw Aaliyah Edwards everywhere off that play. She does such a nice job of help recovering, talking through switches, but also making sure that she maintains a level of protection, protection in the paint. Post touch here for Griffin. Five total double figure scoring games, and most of them has actually come when she's a starter. Griffin sitting at eight points here today as Allen going up against Griffin will get a second chance at it. Dina Westbrook coming off that Arkansas game where Gina Oriema said that arguably that was the best game that she had played wearing a UConn uniform. 19 points, seven assists, six rebounds. She went five of seven from the three point line. She's been really consistent for them too. And a nice addition as well. Williams with the baseline try. First Tennessee transfer to UConn in yeah. program's history. And got to play against her old teammates as well. Was clutch in that game for UConn. Griffin coming down with the rebound. And that's where it's interesting to think. 
Edwards having trouble with it and the blocking foul called on Allen. The fact that UConn, of course, coming off a loss against Arkansas, tough battle in coming back from deficit in, in beating Tennessee. However, their margin, average margin of victory, still 33 points per game. And a team that I think Gino in, in this group feels like they're still trying to fit the pieces together, still not yet clicking on all cylinders. Well, I mentioned they've been on the road since since Thursday, really Friday, because they got in late as Beckers misses the deep attempt. Uh, Friday they got in late. It was kind of a rehab day for them here at Wintrust as they put in some practice time. Saturday they kind of got back to work. But, you know, it was it was the defensive questions for Gino that was the biggest question he wanted answered here today. And, you know, it, it helped that UConn got in early because of, there was a couple snowstorms coming in the Chicagoland area as well. And just want to, you know, thank all our crew and everyone who came in. Some, some crew traveling and getting up at like 6 a.m. to try to work in this game and battling some of those roads in the city and the Chicagoland area. I feel torn because I'm home here in Chicago, so I wouldn't mind getting stuck in the snowstorm before I have to get back. But that's the way it goes. Keep your fingers crossed for Sarah Kustak's travel plans. As some of the crew and some of the faces for the first women's game on Fox, it's time. Awesome. To give the showcase and the stage to two great programs in women's basketball. And, and all these faces that you see here putting in the time, Kian Shahi, our producer, John Walsh, our director. We're happy to bring you, again, women's basketball here on Fox. And credit, too, to, to Big East Commissioner Val Ackerman for always having the foresight and the people over at the Big East for having Without the foresight and, and realizing there is a need to put women's basketball on a stage like Fox. It's exposure, and it's getting introduced to the level of talent, skill, the work that these young women pour into their games. And congrats, too, to Commissioner Ackerman for signing a, a, an extension yes. here in the Big East. Yes. She's been a pioneer in a lot of regards, and we are so appreciative for her. The Kelcher with the spin move and going right up against Williams. That got kind of an ooh and an ah from Kristen Williams. She was impressed on that move. No look pass this time to Griffin, and she's in double figures with 10. Now four players for UConn in doubles. Doug Bruno and DePaul have yet to beat UConn and Gina Oriema. The series is 18-1, to 1, but that one came when both of these head coaches were not the respective head coaches on the sideline. All kinds of respect for, for these two when they match up. It'll be Westbrook who brings it up. Under six to play in this one, a 34-point advantage as Edwards posting up deep for two, and she's got 10 points, the fifth double-figure score. Four red jerseys all around the paint on the blocks, and Edwards still comes through with the play. Layups for UConn, 23 to seven on the afternoon. And one of the layups coming off the no-looker. Look at this vision. I mean, Paige Becker's looking in the corner where there was a teammate. And a showtime Paige Becker's. Right on the money, slices through the defense. She's misdirecting you on all turns. And, and there's so many opportunities throughout the game that you see that. And she does it in such a smooth nature that it's hard to describe just how challenging it is. The things and the moves she's doing, the degree of difficulty. And one, another one for Kristen Williams. And Williams leading all scores right now. 26 points for Williams. She has been just nasty in her ability to slice to the basket, get to the lane. You see her get hit on the head off that play, but turning the corner. And that's so much of where she thrives. When she can get downhill, use her explosiveness, but also the strength around the basket to still be able to finish through contact. And for her, it's about do, learning to do all the things, the little things, different aspects of the game aside from just the attack and score. Beckers will take a seat. You got to wonder if that's going to be the end of Paige Beckers in this game. Five minutes to play. 
Beckers with the 22 points on 8 of 15 shooting. And back the other way, it's an and one for DePaul. Doug Curnow has always said in playing UConn, the worst thing that could happen is not being ready to play. The best thing that would happen, obviously, would be to beat them. The next best thing would be to compete. But with all of those three scenarios, he knows that there are serious learning lessons that come with what he calls the best basketball program ever. Not women's basketball program, but basketball program. And he says, you know, he jokes, I'm old enough to have watched some of those John Wood and UCLA teams. Taking it inside, trying the contact. Westbrook for the N1. To your original statement, DePaul did come out ready to play. And they set the tone early. They looked comfortable. They were knocking down shots. But this UConn team kept building in how they were executing the fundamentals of the game, what they were doing on the glass, what they did defensively in shooting the gaps, the ball movement, how they attacked DePaul's defense. And it continued to blossom. We said the discrepancy all happened in the second quarter, but now it has continued. And it gives you film. It gives you areas to study. However, I do think that in watching this Huskies team, they took things to another level. And you expected that in response to their first loss of the season. What you want is a response now from DePaul on how they close out this game. Both of these head coaches have the same scheduling philosophy about playing tough opponents. They, they both have built a program. If you want to move the program, you got to play people. And, and you have to schedule people. And if you want to make moves in March, you have to move through the best. And that is learned in November, December, January, February. Shovel pass in for another two for Bakelja. And it's also interesting when you look at the landscape of women's basketball right now, the uncertainty surrounding the uniqueness of the season, dealing with the pandemic. But there's no overwhelming favor when it comes to who you think may be at odds to win a title. And UConn, of course, up there. But with the new team, the young players, lack of experience, there's still some time to build with that. And, and, and did you were you definitive in your answer in the pregame on that? Really or did put, you waffle really a little put bit me for, spot. for and I, I, I Again, I'm going to say this is where I've leaned out. I asked pretty much every person I know, Candace Blankson, Jill Pizzotti included, of the DePaul staff, Rebecca Lobo, the, the GOAT of women's but basketball. But we, we don't care. We, I mean, we do care about what Rebecca Lobo and all those people. So I, want, I, went with, I, went with, I went with Louisville. Uh, just the amount of respect I have for what they've done. Jeff Walls, uh, you know, Dana Evans has been an absolute stud. There's a lot of reasons because you love the extreme amount of depth they have. I also think that I may have been shaded a bit in how I watched them just dominate it against DePaul in the early part of the season. Champion will have a, a, an opinion about who's the best. She's played on some of the best Notre Dame teams. And, and you're reading that graphic right, by the way. This will be the only time you see that label on Jewel Light, the Paul student manager, because we all know what she was able to do on the basketball court, of course, with Notre Dame. And she eventually was the number one overall pick to go to the Seattle Storm, won a couple of championships there. But she's trying, she left Notre Dame, if you remember, left Notre Dame early. So she's actually finishing up her undergrad degree. And while doing that, she's a student manager. And while being a student manager, she can actually practice with this DePaul basketball team this Which year. Which has been, I'm sure, so valuable for her, for this DePaul group. And for those to take it behind the curtain, normally, especially programs of DePaul and UConn, but women's programs have a, that are, are students, but men's practice team. They come in, they run the scout team, they're practicing against these players each and every day. It brings that added level of, of physicality that you can get used to. And, uh, you know, that's something that is not available and does not exist here during the, the days of COVID. And so Jewel Lloyd, as you asked Doug Bruno, who, who is she emulating? <laughs> she said, well, you know, I mean, she obviously can't do all five UConn players, but at some point she can Beckers and same Williams time. and Westbrook. At least not at the same time. Right, right. But what a, what a valuable tool that DePaul has to have Jewel Lloyd as a practice player and a student manager this year. By the way, did you love the way our production crew threw you that lifeline? Uh, we just showed Jewel Lloyd to get you off of the topic of who's the best team in the 
nation this year. Best truck. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I've got our great producer, Keon, in my ear, though, saying, I don't think you gave an answer. You've got to be definitive. UConn hitting the century mark, 100 to 62. Speaking of some of the best teams in the country, by the way, Louisville and NC State will play each other tomorrow night, followed by Connecticut and South Carolina. That one you can catch on FS1 on February 8th, the Monday night showdown between those two teams. And Dawn Staley, yes. an old Olympic assistant to oh. Gina Oriema, and now, of course, the USA head coach. Absolutely. And Dawn Staley, she's got her South Carolina program. I mean, they're probably playing the best basketball at this point right now in the season. NC State, they've got experience. They've got veterans. How does that factor in? pending the way the season goes. And all of these programs, I think, too, you look at, they'd either be clicking and they're going along, they're catching a the rhythm, and then you hit a pause um, due to different circumstances of, of needing to take a break because of COVID issues. So I think for all of that, it, it's been a disjointed year for everyone across the board. So there's still a lot to learn about each, each university and how their teams are going to look when it comes down to tournament time. Sailor Poffenbarger, by the way, number four for UConn, is getting her very first minutes as a UConn player. She's an early enrollee. She en enrolled last week, really before the Tennessee game, became eligible right around January 15th. She had to follow a medical quarantine, and you see her in the top part of your screen, number four, playing in her very first minute. She's got the ball right now as a Husky. And her very first practice with the team was just on Tuesday. You got two ranked opponents in the week. I'm not sure if Coach Oriyama anticipated. Give it to Sailor. She's short. First attempt. Oh. Trying to pick up the steal. But a sneak peek at the opportunity of what she can bring to the table. Danager knocks down the three for DePaul. They've hit eight of those. Their average is nine for the year. Nine per game. And your biggest takeaway from each team, Sarah, is what? that UConn took things up to another level. Coming off of a loss, they responded in a way that they were aggressive on both ends of the floor. You're starting to see them come together. For them, it's all about gelling together with a new group. And Paige Beckers is everything we thought she would be and more. Nearly 34 points per game average margin of victory following a loss for UConn. Impressive showing here, rebounding from that defeat. It's Williams with a career high 29 points for UConn, and some of the questions maybe were answered for Gina Oriema. Following the loss against Arkansas, UConn continues to respond. Our final score, 100 to 67. We hope you enjoyed our coverage of women's basketball here on Fox. For Sarah Kustock, our entire Fox crew, I'm Lisa Bynes. And coming up after the break, it's Fox College Hoops Extra with Rob Stone. 100 to 67, your final.